Bismillahirrahmanirrahim uh, and welcome back to this next video and uh, in this particular video uh, I'll be talking about the uh, innate immune system so the first thing is uh, what is an immune system so when you talk about the uh, immune system the immune system is actually a, a complex networks of cell and proteins that defend the body against infection so generally when you talk about the uh, immune system it is actually the collection of the cells and proteins that are useful in defending the body against the uh, infection by different pathogens now the immune system is broadly divided into two types one is known as the innate immune system and the other one that is known as the adaptive immune system. So uh, this will be a series of videos uh, on the innate immune system and the uh, adaptive immune system. So in this particular video, I want to uh, start the discussion on the uh, innate immune system. Now the first thing is, uh, what does this uh, innate mean? Uh, when you talk about this innate, it actually means inborn or natural. What this means is that the innate immune system that is actually an inborn and a natural immune system that defends the body against the uh, infection by different pathogens. So this innate immune system, it actually refers to uh, non-specific defense mechanisms that come into play immediately or within hours after the uh, antigen appearance in the body. So this is actually a differentiation of the uh, innate immune system from the adaptive one that it comes into play immediately. The adaptive immune system, it needs a lot of time uh, for action, but the innate immune system that is actually uh, that actually comes into play uh, immediately. Now this innate immune system uh, that include uh, different things. Uh, one of the uh, important thing that is that is included in the innate immune system that is the physical barrier. Uh, for example, the skin or the uh, mucosa that is present in your body. And in this particular video, I'll be only focusing on this physical barrier, how these physical barriers, they are helpful in defending your body against the pathogens. Another important thing that is included in the innate immune system, there are different chemicals in your blood and in your body. Uh, for example, the mucus that you will see in this particular video, uh, the, the stomach acid that is also very helpful in defending the body against uh, different kinds of the pathogens. The cytokines, the complement system, uh, we'll be uh, discussing about all of these components uh, in the uh, next video. The third important component that is included in the uh, innate immune systems, these are the immune cells and especially the uh, phagocyte cells that includes the neutrophils, the monocytes and the macrophages. So all of these things, whether they are the physical barrier, they are the chemicals in the body or in your blood or they are the immune cells like the phagocytes all of them, they are actually non-specific in their nature. Therefore, they are included in the innate immune system. So let us talk about the uh, physical barrier in detail. And in the following videos, I'll be talking about this uh, chemicals in the blood or body. And then we'll be talking about the uh, immune cells. When you talk about these uh, physical barriers, uh, the most important physical barriers that are included in the uh, innate immune system, they are the skin and other epithelial surfaces, uh, including those lining the lungs and the uh, gut of your bodies. Now what these physical barriers do is that they are actually working as a barrier uh, for the uh, inside and uh, for the cells uh, of from the inside and outside of the body. So the physical barrier, they are actually separating the interior and the um, exterior of the cell or the interior and the exterior of the body. So when you talk about the skin, that is actually preventing the uh, interior, uh, that is actually separating the interior of the body from the exterior of the body. When you talk about these uh, skin cells, they are actually uh, made up of the uh, epithelial cells. And these epithelial cells, as you can see over here, they are very tightly connected to each other. So when they are tightly connected to each other, they are actually working as a barrier for the entry of the pathogens in the body. 
Now these epithelial cells, they are actually connected to each other. When you, when you uh, talk about the technical terms, they are actually connected to each other by different junctions. And the function of these junction is to provide mechanical stability to the epithelial cells. They also serves as the gatekeeper and they are very important in the homeostasis. Now two of the uh, important junctions that you usually see in the epithelial cells, one is known as the tight junction and the other one they are known as the adherence junction. So for example, if these are the two epithelial cells, so when you talk about the uh, tight junctions, what these tight junctions do, that they are actually present at the apical surface or you can say at the top surface of these cells and these tight junctions, they are actually made up of different proteins. Uh, for example, uh, the claudine proteins are there, the uh, occludin proteins, and the junctional adhesion molecules. So the claudines, the occludins, and the junctional adhesion molecules, they actually make these uh, tight junctions. As you can see over here, these tight junctions, they are actually connecting the upper part of the epithelial surfaces to each other, and they are actually creating this barrier, and the pathogens that cannot actually cross this barrier to enter into the body. So this is one of the important junctions that you see in the uh, epithelial cells, and they are known as the uh, tight junctions. And as you can see over here, these proteins, they are actually the transmembrane protein. They are, uh, you can say, uh, present in the interior of the cell as well as in the exterior of the cell. So they are transmembrane protein. So they are present, uh, uh, they are actually uh, across the membrane. So as these proteins, they are present in this epithelial cells and in this epithelial cells and the, on the exterior part, they are connected to each other to make this particular barrier. Another important junction that is known is the uh, adherence junction and uh, these adherence junctions they are actually present at the basal surfaces of these epithelial cells. So the tidy junction they are present on the uh, upper part of the epithelial cells. These adherence junctions they are actually present at the basal surfaces. Now the important proteins that are present in these adherence junctions they are known as the cadherin proteins. And as you can see over here, these uh, cadenin proteins uh, in the interior of the cells, they are in connection with the actin filament, the cytoskeleton of the cell. So inside the cell, these cadenin proteins, they are in interaction with the uh, actin filaments in both of these cells. In this particular cell, they are connected, the cadenins of this particular cell, they are connected to their own actin filaments. And in this particular cells, these cadenin are present to their uh, actin filaments. So these actin filaments and these cadenin, they are actually hooked to each other. And when they are hooked to each other, so then they are present, then they are, uh, they cross the cell membrane and one of their part that is present outside the cell. Same is the case with uh, this particular uh, cadenin protein. So at the exterior of the cells, uh, these two cadenin proteins, they are connected to each other, thereby connected, thereby connecting these two epithelial cells. So because of these junctions, whether that are the tight junctions or the adherence junction, they are actually providing a barrier for the entry of the pathogens in the body. So this is one of the important thing about the physical barrier that they are actually not allowing, they are not providing any space for the entry of the pathogen into the body. Another important thing is that when you look at the uh, interior of these epithelial surfaces, these epithelial surfaces, they are covered with a mucus layer. These uh, mucus layer, if you uh, talk about their uh, compositions, they are primarily made of secreted mucins and other glycoproteins. And these mucins and the glycoproteins, they are produced by a special type of the cells, which are known as the mucus cells. So on the interior of the epithelial surfaces, these mucus cells, they are producing this mucus layer, which is made up of the secreted mucins and the glycoproteins. Now, what is the function of this uh, mucus layer? One of the important function of this mucus layer is they physically help prevent pathogens from adhering to the uh, epithelium. 
when you talk about the uh, pathways of the pathogens about the about their entry into the host cells so their first step is adherence to the cell so this mucus there that is actually preventing the adherence of the pathogens to the epithelial cells and if they are not able to adhere to the epithelium surface that means they will not be able to enter into the body so this is one of the important function of the uh, mucus layer now this mucus layer they also help their uh, the clearance of the pathogens by beating cilia on the epithelial cells so these beating cilia they are actually uh, responsible for the clearance of the pathogens on the uh, epithelial cells if you talk about the uh, composition of this mucus layer uh, as i've told you there are primarily the mucins and glycoproteins but this mucus there also contains antimicrobial peptides and as the name indicate these peptides they are small uh, peptides they are actually having antimicrobial property and the most abundant of these uh, uh, antimicrobial peptides the most abundant are known as the uh, defense proteins or defense peptides these defense and peptides they are very small peptides like if you talk about their length this is a family of the proteins and they are small peptides ranging from uh, 12 amino acids to 50 amino acids so we are talking about small protein that can be made from 12 amino acids that can be made of the 50 amino acids or that can be between 12 to 50 amino acids so we are talking about the uh, small proteins so these antimicrobial peptides which are present in this mucus layer, the most abundant are called is the defensins. When you talk about the uh, structure of these defensins, uh, one of their important property is that they are positively charged. Uh, and what is the importance of this positive charge on the defensins that will be cleared in a while. Another important property is that these defensins, they have hydrophobic or amphiphatic domains. And these hydrophobic or the amphiphatic domains they are also very important i'll talk about their function in a while when you talk about the uh, function or the spectrum of these defenses these defenses have broad spectrum activity what i mean by that is that these defenses they can act on the gram positive as well as the gram negative bacteria they can also act on the fungi they can also uh, inhibit their uh, growth and they can also kill them these defense can also act on the parasites including the protozoa and the nematodes and these defense are also active against the uh, enveloped viruses for example the uh, hiv virus now let us talk about the uh, function of the uh, defense in a uh, little bit detail now how these defensin work uh, that is not still yet clear but the theory is that the defensins they use their uh, hydrophobic or the amphiphatic domains to insert themselves into the membrane of the pathogens so the hydrophobic or the amphiphatic domains of the defensins when they insert themselves into the membrane of the pathogen this means that the membrane of the pathogen that will be disrupted and when you have disrupted the uh, membrane of a pathogen or any cell that means that particular cell is not going to survive so this is one theory how these defense in work that they insert themselves into the membrane of the pathogens thereby disrupting the integrity of the membrane now the question is if these defensins have the property of insertion into the membranes of the pathogens they should also have the property of insertion into the host cell like the human beings so why they do not insert themselves into the host cells now it has been noted that these are defensins they actually prefer insertion into those membranes which like the cholesterol and when you talk about the membranes of the human beings they do have cholesterol so these defensins they do not insert themselves into the host membrane but as the uh, pathogen the uh, membranes of the pathogen they like the cholesterol so the defensins can utilize their hydrophobic or amphiphatic domains to insert uh, into the membrane thereby disrupting the uh, membrane integrity of the pathogens 
Now, when the uh, uh, defenses they have disrupted the uh, membrane, the positively charged peptide, as I've told you, these defenses they are positively charged peptides. So once they have inserted themselves, the positively charged peptides of the defenses, then they interact with various negatively charged target within the microbes. And the most important negatively charged target in the microbes that is the DNA. So uh, when the uh, positively charged peptides they interact with the negatively charged DNA that can actually damage the DNA and without the DNA the microorganism they cannot survive. Now one of the uh, important phenomena that you see in the current area uh, in the current era is the uh, resistance by the microorganisms. Now, one of the important thing about the defensin is that the uh, microorganism, they cannot develop resistance. The reason is the relatively, uh, the reason is that defensins, they have a relatively non-specific nature. So if the nature of the defensins that is non-specific, that means that the microorganism cannot acquire resistance against the defensins. Thus, you can say, uh, in principle, the defensins might be useful therapeutic agents to combat infection, either alone or in combination with more traditional drug because of their non-specific nature and the uh, microorganism cannot acquire resistance against the defensins. So if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and share it with your friends. So in the next video, we will continue the discussion on the uh, innate immune system.